King said yes to working with Shuttlesworth for the movement. And they had the very first meeting here. As they came to the podium, each one covered some aspect of the movement. Dr. King's <coughs> um, uh, message was more philosophical. He was talking about the idea of segregation. And th there's God's law and there's man's law. You know, he was saying, all we're asking is that you're true to what you put on paper, speaking of the Declaration of Independence. He, if you listen to any of his stuff, you know that he always compares the Bible with the founding documents. Mm -hmm. So Dr. King is talking and he said, there are, segregation is immoral, it's illegal, and he, it's, he goes on to tell you why. Upstairs, collected everything down here, money and envelopes. Then I started upstairs, and I could. The door is always open in the ladies' lounge there in the front part. And I saw my friends, and I spoke to them. We were really excited. Denise's father, uh, Chris McNair, uh, was my ninth grade teacher in high school. Carol Robertson, her mother, was our local librarian, and. Uh, I said local librarian, uh, in a manner of speaking. I mean, we didn't have a public library for black people. Kamei was in the bathroom. Uh, her other sister, Sarah, was in the bathroom. And Janie, um, I don't know where Janie was, but she was here. And, and so, but we, were getting, we had been getting bomb threats all along, but I didn't know that. Um, you know, parents, when I was a kid growing up, we didn't know the things kids know today. Church, the adults knew that we had been getting bomb threats, but the tendency was not to tell us a lot of things, not just about babies, but just a lot of things. I don't know if they didn't want to worry us, thought we wouldn't know how to handle it or what, but, but so I didn't know. And I answered the phone, the caller on the other end said three minutes, and they quickly hung up, and the mail caller, and then uh, I, still, I was still holding all those materials, I stepped out into the sanctuary. You take there's three steps there. You'll see them when you go upstairs. And at the very first row of pews, I was standing there, hold, walking, when the bomb exploded. Mm -hmm. Right there, at that very first row. We come about three in the morning, and to the sound of the glass crashing in, and then we heard these horrible screams in the street. The mother in that house had awakened, but the two boys didn't. She was trying to wake them up. That's what she told us later. She said she was trying to get them out of there. The husband didn't wake up. They bombed that house because uh, the there were two boys in that house. They had gone away on what we call the American Friends Program, the Quaker Program. And, uh, but their friends were white. And that, this was a reminder. Even though we had the Brown v. Board uh, decision in 1954, everything in Birmingham State staunchly segregated. And so this was a reminder to them, we don't do that here. I've been up here and struggled with that for a while. Uh, I think today they might have said I was clinically depressed from, from the trauma. Just even starting out, we couldn't buy insurance. No one would sell you insurance. When they did those last two trials, it was almost like reliving this and going through all of it again. Before the church was bombed, on the outside here, we had steps. The, the, you, the only way you could get in the building from this side was to walk up those steps to the second floor. The 
bomb was planted somewhere under those steps. There were strong cement steps, but they were blown away when the bomb exploded. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in the last trial, they placed one of the men who would be later, who was convicted, they placed him there, somebody placed him there in that vicinity like three or four o'clock in the morning, doing something they didn't know what he was doing. When they would go back and get Bob Cherry, Robert Cherry, and Tom Blanton, and when they would go back and get those two, now, after Bill Baxley, the state attorney general, arrested the first one and, and they convicted him, he didn't get reelected. Alabama didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So he didn't get reelected. Um, Doug Jones, the first um, Democrat uh, that they had elected as a senator, he was elected about four years ago. He was not reelected. He was only in office about two years, but he wasn't reelected. Doug Jones brought the other two. The same evidence that they brought 14 years later, that they brought 32, 33 years later, they had all that evidence within a week of the bombing. But what, yeah, Bill Baxter said that he didn't think the attitude of the community was such that he didn't feel like they would, you could get them to convict a white person for the murder of a black person. And he just felt like the, the timing, it wasn't the time which is why they came back 14 years later. But even 14 years later, this, you know, it kind of, you know, still wasn't something that, where people rejoiced or whatever. Uh, and then 32, 33. Uh, Tom Blanton was the oldest one. I'm, I'm sorry, Robert Chambers was the oldest one. He died, and the other two were, well, they got a chance to live their life 20, 32, 33 years later. One of them has died, one of them is still in prison. So there's only one left.